And, uh, all right, it's this time, uh, Mr. Paul is recognized. You're thorn in the threat flesh. <laughs> For three minutes. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and welcome, Chairman Bernanke. You know, I guess over the last 30 or 40 years, I have criticized the Fed on occasion. But um, the Congress deserves some criticism, too. The uh, Federal Reserve is a creature of the Congress, and if we don't know what the, they are, what the Fed is doing, we have the authority, and we certainly have the authority to uh, pursue a lot more oversight, which I would like to see. So although the Fed is on the receiving end, and I think rightfully so when you look at the record, I mean, the Fed's been around for 99 years, almost a few years before you took it over, um, and 99 percent, 98 percent of the dollar value is gone from the 1913 dollar. So that's not really a very good record. And uh, I think what we're witnessing today is the end stages of a grand experiment, a philosophic experiment on total fiat money. Yes, they've been debasing currencies for hundreds, if not thousands of years, and they always end badly. They always return to market-based money, which is commodity money, gold and silver. But this experiment is something different than we've ever had before. And it started in 1971 where we were actually given an opportunity in many ways to be the issuer of the fiat currency. And we had way too many benefits from that than uh, people realized. But it's gone on for 40 years, and people keep arguing from the other side of this argument that it's working, it's doing well. And yet, from my viewpoint and the viewpoint of the free market economists, all it's doing is building a bigger and bigger bubble. And uh, the free market economists were the ones who predicted the Nasdaq bubble, the housing bubbles, but we never hear from the Keynesian liberal economists and the central bankers and saying, watch out, there's, there's a bubble out there. There's uh, too much credit, too many problems there. There's a housing bubble. We have to deal with it. Usually we get reassurance from the Fed on that. But I believe it's, there's a logical reason for this because the Federal Reserve is given a responsibility to protect the value of the dollar. That's what state prices are all that. But we don't even have a definition of a dollar. You know, we ask about the definition of a dollar, and I say, oh, it's whatever it's by. Well, every single day it buys less than the next day. And to me, it's sort of like building an economy and having economic planning, like a builder had a yardstick that changed its value every single day. I mean, just think of the kind of a building we have. And this is why we have this imbalance in our, our economic system. But it was a system designed to pyramid debt. We have a debt-based system. The more debt we have and the more debt the Federal Reserve buys, the more currency they can print. And they monetize this debt. And no wonder we're in a debt crisis. It's worldwide. I think it's something we've never experienced before. And uh, I think the conclusion will be a vindication either for sound money or if you win the argument and say, yes, we are great managers, we know how to do it, we want the credit for the good times, and we want the credit for getting us out of those good times, I mean, I think within a few years we're going to know. Of course, I'm betting that the market is smarter, commodity money is smarter, we're not, nobody's smart enough to uh, have central economic planning. So I'm anxiously waiting for this day for the conclusion because reforms have to come. They're already talking about, when you see Robert and Zolik talking about monetary reform, reforms and talking about gold, our time has come for serious discussion on monetary reform. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Dr. Paul. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Bernanke, if you don't mind, would you tell me whether or not you do your own shopping at the grocery store? Yes, I do. Okay, so you're aware of the prices. But, you know, this argument that the prices are going up about 2%, nobody believes it. You know, and the old CPI says prices are going up at 9%. So they believe this. If people have fixed incomes, they're really hurting. The middle class is really hurting because their inflation rate is very much higher than the government tries to tell them. And that's why they lose trust in government. But, you know, this whole idea about prices and debasement of currency, if, I, if uh, you loaned me $100 and in two years from now I gave you 90 back, you'd be pretty upset. But we hand back, back money back that's worth 10 or 15 or 20 percent less, and, and, and nobody seems to be able to do anything about it, but it's very upsetting. But it's theft. If I don't give you your, your full $100 back, if you've loaned me $100, somebody, I'm stealing $10 from you. So somebody's stealing wealth, and this is very upsetting. But you know, um, 
last in January at one of your press conferences, you said that uh, you sort of poked a little bit of fun at people uh, to downplay the 2% inflation rate. But if you say it's 2 and I say it's 9, it's compromised for the sake of argument that it's 5%. That uh, you said that if, if it doesn't hurt you unless you're one of those people who stick the money in, in the mattress. But, uh, but where are you going to put it? Are you going to put it in a CD and not make any money at all? So this, this, doesn't, this doesn't make any sense. It doesn't encourage the savings, and it just uh, discourages people. But I do want to make a point about prices, because prices go up. That, to me, is not the inflation. It is one of the bad consequences of the inflation, which comes from the increase in the money supply. And that's one of the bad effects. But, you know, uh, you took over the Fed in, in 2006. I have a, a silver ounce here. And this, this ounce of, uh, of silver back in 2006 would buy over four gallons of gasoline. Today, today it'll buy almost 11 gallons of gasoline. That's preservation of value, and that's what, that's what the market has always said should be money. M money comes into effect in a natural way, not in a, an edict, not by fiat, by governments declaring it, it, is, it is money. But uh, why, uh, why is it that we can't consider you know, the two of us, an option. You love paper money. I think money should be honest, constitutional, still on the books, gold and silver, legal tender. Why don't we use it? But why don't we allow currencies to uh, run parallel? They do around the world. I, my, one of my options, uh, you know, as much as I would like to do something with the Fed, I say the Fed's going to self-destruct eventually anyway when the money, when the money's gone. But why, why wouldn't we legalize competing currencies? Why can't, could people save, put, put this in a mattress and get four or five times much of the value in a few years. So the record of, of, of what you've done in the last six years is destroy the value of real money, uh, of, of paper money. At the same time, real money is preserved. But a competing currency, we ha already have a, a silver eagle. It's legal tender for a dollar. And some people say, well, it's legal tender, it's a dollar, it's on the books, and they use it, and they get into big trouble. The government comes and closes them down, and you can get arrested for that. But what would be wrong with talking about parallel currency and competing currencies? This is something that Hayek talked about, something that I think would be a compromise, and that we could uh, work along those views. Uh, first of all, good to see you again, uh, Congressman <laughs> Paul. Um, just one word on the inflation. Um, of course, those numbers are constructed by the Bureau of Labor Statistics, not by the Fed. They're independently constructed, and I think they're done in a very serious and thoughtful way. Um, on alternative currencies, um, nobody prevents you from holding silver or gold if you want to. It's perfectly legal to do that. And you're also happy to, uh, it's also perfectly fine to um, hold other currencies, uh, euros or yen or whatever else. So in that respect, you can do that, and, and I'd be happy to talk to you about but, but other options. Mr. Chairman, that's not money. I mean, when you pay taxes to buy a coin or you have a capital gains tax, when it's not, if you have to settle a lawsuit, it's always settled in depreciating Federal Reserve notes. It's never settled in, in the real contract. So that's nothing near money uh, when, when it's illegal to use it. But to do it, you'd have to repeal the legal tender laws. You would have to legalize this. You'd have to get over the sales taxes. You'd have to get rid of the capital gains taxes. People, even in Mexico, they're talking about this. They're trying to have competing currencies. They've been wiped out too many times with inflation and wipe out the middle class. They're allowing people to start to save in a silver currency. So uh, I hope we move along in that direction because there shouldn't be any uh, uh, you know, overwhelming changes all of a sudden that there could be a transition. People could vote on it. Maybe they'll give up on the Federal Reserve note and vote for real money. I'd be very happy to talk to you about it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh